together, we'll be joining a community of millions of people all over the world who use this growing resource on a daily basis. Your question might be, what is the internet and how does it work? You make the connection to your internet service provider using a local telephone call dialed through your computer modem. From your modem, your call is received here. But how do you know that you are using a large quality internet service provider such as ESA or MSN and not small backyarders? Thanks Cheryl. Thanks Rob. Some people say you need the latest and greatest in computer equipment to access the internet. And while there's no disadvantage in having the latest and greatest, you don't need to have your personal computer set up like the Starship Enterprise to start surfing the net the way a surfer would surf Bells Beach. However, when buying a computer, there are a few basic requirements that you need to keep in mind. When shopping for a computer, one term you'll see time and time again is the word multimedia. But what does multimedia mean? Multimedia capability is becoming very important today on the internet as more and more internet information contains video and sound as well as text. A good example is today's encyclopedia. Where in the past you went and bought a mountain load of books, today's encyclopedia now comes in electronic format, such as this on a CD-ROM. To access this CD-ROM, you need a multimedia PC. What is a multimedia PC? Well, it's a PC equipped with multimedia capability and the following components. These components are a sound card mounted internal to the PC, a set of speakers or headphones, and a CD-ROM drive. So now you've got your personal computer, you're still missing one major component that will allow you to access the internet, and this is a modem. Modem stands for modulator, demodulator meaning that a modem is a device that translates the signals between your computer and telephone line and back again to a receiving computer. There are three types of modem. The external modem is the most common and it plugs into your PC and into a power source. It has the advantages of being able to be moved between computers. An internal modem is fitted inside your PC, usually by the manufacturer. While it has the advantages of being an integral part of your PC and using the power source from the PC, its disadvantage is that it cannot be moved between PCs. And if a problem occurs with your modem, you lose the use of your PC while it is being repaired. The third type of modem is the PC card modem. It is a modem the size of a credit card and fits into a notebook and palm top devices. It comes as a modem that connects to your telephone line at home or in a hotel. And for some versions, they allow you to communicate via your mobile phone. In terms of modem speed, like most things, the faster the better. However, remember that internet access time is not the speed of your modem, but the speed of the modem you're talking to. In other words, if you've got a high speed modem, but you're talking to a modem that is lower speed than yours, the speed of access is governed by the slowest modem. However, bearing this in mind, it still pays to buy the fastest modem you can afford. The standard today is 33 kps or kilobytes per second. 56k is becoming a new standard, but 33 should be your minimum requirement. So now you've got your personal computer, You've got your modem, so how do you look around the internet? Can you imagine what it would be like if you were looking for a book in a library where nothing was categorised? It could take you weeks, months, maybe even years to find what you're looking for. And so the same could be said if you were aimlessly browsing the 20 odd million pages of the internet. <laughs> Browsing with the Internet Explorer provides you with everything you'll need to view, investigate and download any of the pages that make up the World Wide Web. It also allows you to use other Internet functions. These include multimedia, which is live audio and visual, Internet Relay Chat, known as IRC, and email, which is the most widely used feature on the Internet, but more on that later. So how do we 
move around this huge warehouse of information without getting lost? Well, all you need is one of these. It's a software application appropriately called a browser. And by now, you should have found one of these CDs in your pack. The ESA Internet Express Pack contains everything you need to make the connection to the net. All you need to do is follow the step-by-step on-screen instructions. To continue your access, simply purchase prepaid express cards from your dealer. Or, to add hours, go to www.esa.net.au or phone the ESA Help Desk. So as you can see, there's a lot of information on the internet. But before you can go surfing, you've actually got to connect to the internet and start your browser. Now to start your browser is quite easy. You just click on the internet button that's on your desktop. Once you've clicked on the internet button, up will come your login screen. Now, your member ID is already going to be there. Then you've got to enter your secure password. And then you click connect. After a few seconds, you'll hear your modem dialing. A few seconds later, you'll hear the computers start talking to each other. Now that's your computer and your internet service provider. Right now, the internet service provider is actually verifying your internet access privileges. Now what this means is it's making sure that your username and password are the same, so no one else is actually logging in to your account. Now the browser's loaded, and as you can see, it's actually loaded to our home page, or start page. Before you can get the most out of your browser and start really surfing the web, it's best if you know one or two of the screen elements. Now your connection icon is actually situated on your taskbar. That's in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. It actually tells you some very good information. First of all, it tells you what speed your modem is connected to the internet at. Secondly, it'll tell you how long you've been connected to the internet and it'll also tell you how much information has been sent or received. There's a few other buttons that you should be aware of and they're part of the screen or your browser. Now, in actual fact, these are the back, forward, home, refresh and stop buttons. I'm going to tell you what each of those do. Back and forward are really like your, let's say, page turners, electrical page turners. If you want to move back to a web page that you've already visited, basically what you've got to do is click back. That takes you back one page at a time. Now once you've moved back from a web page, you can move forward again, obviously just by clicking forward. You also have the stop button. Now the stop button is actually used to stop the download of any information that is currently coming off the internet. You see, sometimes internet images don't come down properly. And it's a bit of a pain, but by clicking on stop, it stops the downloading of this information. The refresh button starts the process again. So it connects to the website that you're wanting to download, starts it all over again, and downloads the images, hopefully, properly. The home button is used to take you back to your start page. So actually, if you want to go back to your start page, you simply click home. Now, what we're going to look at now is the address window. The address window is a way of navigating your way around the web. Like you've got an address, and hopefully so have I, I might live at 123 High Street in New South Wales. We can all understand that, it's pretty easy. But the thing is, the web has addresses too. They're called URLs in some cases. That means Uniform Resource Locator. Whew. Simply enough, it's an address. Now, these are pretty easy to understand. I'm going to give you one or two pointers. Don't worry, you don't have to actually understand what I'm saying at the moment. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an insight. Underneath the toolbar, where you had your back, forward and home buttons, is the address window. Now, the address window is pretty simple, really. This takes you to the web page that you want to visit. Now, you might say, how do I know the address? Well, it's quite simple. A little later on, I'm going to tell you about the directory service or search engines. This allows you to find out which web address you want to visit. 
At this time, if I know the address that I want to go to, I can just simply type in its address and hey presto, I'm going to be there. Now, what I'm going to do now is go to The Age. The Age is a newspaper in Melbourne. I'm going to visit their page and let's see what they've got. First of all, I've got to type in their address. Now, www. That's the first part of the address. This stands for World Wide Web. The next part of the address is their domain name. In this case, it's The Age. Followed by a dot. The third part of the address is com, C-O-M. This stands for a commercial site. Now, some addresses do vary. They might be gov or edu. This would stand for government site or educational site. Sometimes you can make mistakes. Now, the last part of the address is what country is the web address situated in. The age is in Melbourne, therefore it's in Australia. So the last part of the address is AU. Obviously standing for Australia, it could be UK, United Kingdom, NZ, New Zealand, etc. Now, if it doesn't have a suffix like AU, NZ or UK and it just ends in com, normally this means that the site is actually situated in America. Once you've typed in the address, simply press enter and after waiting a few seconds, the browser will connect to the site and up will come the page. So all of a sudden, we've arrived at the age in Melbourne. Now the Age is a tremendous site. It's got so much content. You can check out the fastest breaking news stories. It's right up to the minute. You can get your latest sports result, business information. It's all there, even classified advertisements. Now the Age has a whole host of information as I've just said. When you move your mouse pointer over the uh, various pieces of text or images or graphics that you can see on the page, you'll see that the pointer changes from a pointer to a hand. Now when it does this, it means it can take you somewhere else on that page or somewhere else in the world. What this is called is a hypertext link. Now a hypertext link is just a link from this page to somewhere else. So by actually clicking on the classified hypertext link, that'll actually take us to the classified area of the age we might want to sell perhaps a computer or a car. Now, once you're at the classified area, it asks you to fill in a few particulars, like your name, your uh, address, and so forth. You also have to put in what you're selling. You can then select a publication that you would like your advertisement to appear in. In this case, you've got the choice of the Sydney Morning Herald, or in fact, The Age. You then select a category that you'd like your advertisement to appear in. Now, it could be employment, real estate, motors, or just general buy and sell. If I wanted to sell this computer, basically I'd have to enter all the key elements of my advertisement. Sometimes this takes a little bit of thought, and the age might adjust your advertisement so it sounds better. They will call you if it wasn't quite right. Once you've entered in all the particulars of the item that you'd like to sell, you click the Submit button. Now once you click the Submit button, uh, what's going to happen, the age may send you a cookie. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, it's nothing you eat. It's not as sinister as what people think. It's basically a unique identification tag that's going to identify you to the age the next time that you visit. Like when you place an ad over the telephone, they ask for your telephone number. This then brings up your name and address, and they can identify with you. A cookie is very similar. It's going to identify you and give them all of your details the next time you want to place an ad. So if you ever have to accept a cookie, don't worry about it. Just accept the cookie, it's nothing sinister, it's not a virus, it's just there to identify you the next time that you visit that site. Now, we can move back to the Age homepage. We can do it by clicking the electronic page turner, remember, back on the toolbar. Once you're back at the Age homepage, 
we can go and visit a few other sites that might actually appear there. In particular, the real estate section. Now, the real estate section on the age is excellent. It's the future of buying and selling homes. By clicking on the hypertext link, this takes you to the real estate site where you've got a whole host of information on current market trends and what's happening in your area. You can even browse and have a look at some of the latest houses that have actually been listed on the market. And soon you'll be able to buy a house directly off the net. A common misconception is that financial information can be sent across the internet unsecurely. Whilst this is true to a degree, your browser will inform you when you're going to do this process. Microsoft's Internet Explorer 4 browser has a unique component called the Microsoft Wallet. This effectively encodes your financial information and allows it to be sent securely, effectively making the internet more secure for financial transactions than your local shopping centre. Twice for the third and last time then, are you all done, all silent? Well, the property is sold to you, sir and madam, and my congratulations to you. A wonderful buy. Thank, Thank you. you. So as you can see, buying a house off the internet will be easy. Once you've bought your house, you'll probably want to find a local tourist attraction or somewhere to eat. Now historically, you would have used these yellow pages. But now, the national yellow pages is available straight off the internet. So, why don't you let your mouse do the walking? Once you're at the yellow pages home site, you can actually put in the business name, product type or service, postcode or suburb, and the state that it's situated in. Now I know a nice little restaurant up in the hills, the Cuckoo Restaurant, which is situated in Olinda. It's a restaurant in Victoria. Once the system comes up with all the particulars on the restaurant, you have the telephone number, fax number and location. We can then make a reservation. You might be wondering how I'm connecting to the internet from out here. Using a notebook computer and a popular digital phone, as long as you have a signal, you can access the internet from anywhere in the world. Thank you, Sharon. Magnificent. Now, I've just discovered that the Cuckoo Restaurant is the largest continental restaurant in the Southern Hemisphere. We found the Cuckoo Restaurant by using the Yellow Pages, which is a national directory. To find things that are either local or international, we can use the general search engines. The way that you find your general search engine is by clicking on the search button from the toolbar. You'll notice that the screen splits. Here, you can access the five most powerful search engines on the internet. Type in what you're looking for, for example, tourist attractions in the Dandenong Ranges, and press enter. The system goes off and searches for our criteria. Now we have a list, we can select a tourist attraction in the area. Now this looks like a big engine. Thanks, Peter. You're welcome. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. What a fantastic ride on Puffin Billy. Now while search engines provide you with pages on words that you've been searching for, unfortunately, they give you very little content. Now that's a lovely old engine. Not like some of the new engines though. City Search is a very exciting engine providing a lot of content. Now to get to City Search, we've got to return back to the Age homepage. Remember, to go back to the Age homepage, it's www. Now, that's the World Wide Web. The Age, that's their domain name, .com, for a commercial site, .au, they're in Australia, and enter. Once we're at the Age homepage, we can click on the City Search Hypertext link. At the moment, we've seen the yellow pages, and that showed us some very general information on certain topics, like restaurants. Then we saw the general search engines, 
and that showed us general information on tourist attractions that we looked at. Now, City Search is different to both of those because it actually provides content, as I said before. The content is specific to cities, as the name suggests. For example, if we want to visit the City Search site, we would go to their web page. You can go to the map, click on Melbourne, then up will come the directory of all the information about Melbourne. You scroll down the page, and on the left hand side, you'll see arts and entertainment, eat, drink, sleep, community, and so on. There's so much information, even sporting events, of course. If we wanted to check out what's happening around town, it doesn't matter if it's art galleries, live music, or even theatre and stage. You follow the directory down the left hand side of the page. So, let's check out stage. When the page comes up, you've got some pictures and a fair bit of text. It tells you all about what's happening in stage around Melbourne. Under theatre, you can check out the events that are taking place. It gives you the starting date, the ending date, and a brief overview of what the theatre stage show is about. If you're looking for something to do, either before the show commences or after it finishes, City Search has got everything that you need. It even gives you the option to choose whether it's going to be 500 metres away or even up to 4 kilometres. If you wanted to find somewhere to eat before the show commences, you select the where to eat category. You can then specify up to, let's say, 1 kilometre. Click go and that'll take you to a list of locations that meet that criteria. Sometimes a download can take a little bit of time, but if you look at the bottom of the browser, there's a little indicator that is building as the page is downloading. When the page is finished downloading, done will appear on the bottom of the browser. We now have a list of the local restaurants that are in the vicinity of the location that we're going to. In fact, we only have two today, and you'll see the associated map. Now, both of these restaurants are situated on the map and are numbered. For example, if we want to go to Victory Cafe, we just click on their name. Once their page is loaded, we've got all the information on the Victory Cafe, where they are located, their telephone number, and so on. If you want to come back to City Search or any other web page that you've seen, a great way to do this is to store it as a bookmark or, as it's called in Internet Explorer 4, a favourite. It's a favourite site. Now, the way that you actually store your favourites is very, very simple. Up on the toolbar where it has Back, Forward, Stop, Home and Refresh, you can click on Favourites. By simply selecting Add to Favourites, that site is stored for later use. You can even categorise the way that you store your favourites. You can put them into little folders, perhaps under art or leisure, restaurants even. Anything that you like, you can store as a favourite. The web's constantly changing, so once you've stored a site as a favourite, it can almost be out of date. Microsoft's Internet Explorer 4 will update some of these sites for you. It's what's called an active favourite, and you can read about it in the step-by-step -step guide accompanying this video. Favourites are great to move to any location that you've previously stored with just one click. So as you can see, jumping from one location to another on the internet is easy. Another exciting feature of the internet is the use of surround video. Basically, it's like taking a 360 degree view of a city or a car, basically anything you want. MSN's Expedia site takes full advantage of surround video. It's just like you're really there. Using your browser and surround video, you don't even have to leave home to visit some of the most picturesque places on Earth. You can even check out the latest cars on the market.
Honestly, nothing beats a real thing, but it's close. The internet provides us with a whole new way of learning, with a world of information at your fingertips. Can you imagine being able to complete an accredited TAFE or university degree from the comfort of your own home or business? Well, it's closer than you think. TAFE Tasmania's Atrium project is using the World Wide Web as the medium for delivering courses. The site is always visible at http colon forward slash forward slash flexlearn.tafe.tas.edu.au. Students may enrol at any time and start learning immediately, regardless of location. Traditional structures such as semesters are no longer applicable with continuous online enrolments. Clients are able to participate in learning from home, work or study centres at any time. TAFE Tasmania's Remote Access Training Centre meets all needs and has distinctive advantages allowing clients to work at their own pace. Gain immediate feedback from end of session review tests, email contact with course coordinators, bulletin board contact with staff and students and participation in online chat sessions. All modules are competency-based training format and meet national standards. So whether your interests are hospitality, food technology, childcare, infotech or industry specific, TAFE Tasmania has it all online. First we had the landline telephone, then we had the cellular telephone, and now we have the world's first internet telephone. So say goodbye to those costly international and interstate calls. For the cost of a local call, you can get in touch with the world. The software allows full video conferencing, shared whiteboard and text talk facilities, as well as the amazing stable quality of voice. Internet made handsets and software are available from www.mateseries.com.au. Further handsets may be purchased and sent to one or more friends free of charge anywhere in the world, direct from their internet website. So with the Internet Mate Total Solution concept, talk is now cheap. So why type when you can talk with the ultimate chat tool? You still there, Paul? One of the biggest fears parents have associated with the internet is on the subject of censorship or apparent lack of it. Whilst there's an abundance of pornographic sites available on the net, parents can censor and control what their children see. The internet is full of things that we want to protect our children from. Sex in particular. Microsoft's Internet Explorer 4 has a built-in ratings advisor. This allows us to decide how much or how little of certain topics we let our children see. If we wanted to view a sex site, we could type in its name and we'd be locked out of that site. We've set our ratings very high. And as you can see, we try to access the site purefilth.com. Because our ratings were set so high, it's locked us out from that site. Now this should offer parents some peace of mind. Input the data. Good morning. This is your wake-up call. Phones, computers, and satellites are all vulnerable. But there is a solution. Your storage capacity. On today's Austereo Network, the net at night. Around Australia, thanks to Hewlett Packard's Office Jet All in One system. Hello, Australia. Hello, Internet. It's Andy G here. Welcome to Australia's only national internet and multimedia radio show. Coming up on the show tonight, well, the it's just going to be so big. Already we have like 65 million people online in the world. That is set to go towards about 2 billion in the next few years. 400,000 people listen to us each week. In fact, more than that and we've got 60,000 people listening online on the internet as well too so that's people inside Australia but mostly outside listeners from America the UK New Zealand 
Even Africa is listening these days, which is great. I've always been interested in the internet. I've always been a computer programmer ever since I was a kid back in, uh, in primary school. And I've had this interest. I was also interested in radio as well too. And I thought, hey, why not put the two together? Best music site, I reckon, is Addicted to Noise. Funnily enough, I've actually got a CD-ROM here that's fabulous. It's called Undercover Rock on Multimedia. It is just superb. Great 3D graphics, fantastic sound, interviews with bands like Silverchair, Nina Cherry, Simply Red, uh, Molly Meldrum's featured on it as well too. It's certainly worth going and getting. Soon on Entertainment News. You got it, and your chance now to interact with us. Got a problem with your computer? Perhaps you found a really cool website? Give us a call. 1-800-657-657. The Net at Night's on the air and online all around Australia on today's Austereo Network and all around the world on the net, thanks to Hewlett-Packard. <laughs> When downloading a file, a word of caution, you must be very careful. Some files that you download can contain viruses. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to download an antivirus software program. Now, this program is going to actually protect your system and indicate to you if a virus has been downloaded to your system. It will also show you how to clean your system if a virus infects your computer. To help protect your computer and the information on it, when you're downloading a file, I would suggest you use VET antivirus software. Now, you can get hold of VET antivirus software from their homepage, which is vet.com.au. From here, we're going to download a 30-day free trial of the software. Once you're at the VET homepage, you click Downloads. Now, the evaluation software is free. You click on the version of the software that best suits your computer. It's self-explanatory. Once you click on the evaluation software, it will ask you whether you would like to open the software or save it to your disk. I'd recommend that you choose save it to your disk. Once you choose save it to your disk, you'll be asked to store it as a name on your hard disk. Just click Save and choose the name that was suggested by VET. When you click Save, you're going to see a little lead indicator that will indicate to you how far down the download process the software has come. It might take a couple of minutes, so be patient. Once the software has been installed, you can double click on the software and install it directly to your system. Once antivirus software has been installed on your computer, it will automatically work in the background. You don't have to worry, it does it all for you. There are many download areas on the internet. We've looked at search engines, you're armed with your VET antivirus software, so you can choose to download software from so many sites. Two Cows is just one of them for free software. You'll find many in your travels on the internet. Can you imagine what it'd be like to program your television set to download information that you want and not what someone else wants? Like business, sport, leisure? That's exactly what the channels are about on Internet Explorer 4. By now, you've probably seen the channel button on the toolbar. When you click the channel button, you'll notice a list of channels down the left-hand side. You can select whichever channel is of interest and visit the sites there. For example, 9MSN. That gives us all of the latest news and sports results in Australia. You can program your channel to download information that you want. The business channel is very interesting. This can assist you to move to other areas such as the trading room. If you play the stock market, you're probably used to looking at out-of-date figures in the newspaper. Or you might stand outside the stock exchange and watch the up-to-date figures go past. Bit chilly out there though. The trading room is for you. In the comfort of your office or your home, you can get the latest market overview and the latest up-to-date figures. 
You can manage your portfolios, get company histories and past performance. You can get graphs. You can even keep an eye on what stocks you want to buy by setting up what's called a watch list. If you're using the stock exchange, you need to be in the trading room. Traditionally, your mail would be delivered here, then redistributed, but it all takes time. Nowadays, using the internet, it's delivered quickly, electronically, directly from your desktop. Have you ever had a pen friend on the other side of the world? You write to them, they write back, and by the time that's all taken place, a month or two has passed? Well, not anymore. Using email, you can write to them and they can respond in seconds. You can attach colour photographs, pictures, sound. It could be your voice. Email is the most amazing medium. It's fast, it's efficient, and it's a lot of fun. There are two ways to access email. Firstly, if your browser is already loaded, you can click the Mail button from the toolbar. Come down and select Read Mail. The other way to load email is to click the Launch Outlook Express button on your taskbar. When you load Outlook Express, there are three panels. The panel on the left hand side is called the Outlook Bar. This is where you can view your inbox, your outbox and items that you've sent. Now, inbox is where your mail is received. Outbox is mail that is waiting to be sent. And obviously, sent items are those that have already gone to their destination. Deleted items are items that have been received or sent and you've decided to remove them from your computer. There is also a draft box where you might be working on correspondence at this time. Store anything that is not ready to be sent in your draft box, which is on the Outlook bar. There are a number of screen elements that you should be aware of. These are situated on the toolbar. You'll notice the first is Compose Message. When you want to send a new message, you click the Compose Message icon. A new screen will appear, and this is entitled New Message. At the top of the screen, you have To, CC, BCC, and Subject. Now, don't get confused by this. To is the name of the person you wish to send the mail to. CC stands for carbon copy. So if you want to send a copy to someone, you can. BCC means blind carbon copy. Ah, I know what you're saying. This is very technical and a lot of jargon. Don't worry. I'm going to take you through this step by step. Below BCC or blind carbon copy is subject. This is the subject line. So what you'd like to call your email. Now to send an email, you have to enter the name of the person whom you wish to send the email to. You have to type in their address in the to box. It's pretty easy. If you don't know their address, call them and ask them. Now that might sound absurd, but to start with, it's the best way to get their address correct. Type in the address of the person who you wish to send an email to. And do this in the to box. In the subject line, just click there for a moment. You'll notice that the cursor is flashing. Here, enter the subject of the email you're about to send. For example, it might be a test message. Once you've typed your subject, click into the main text window. Here, you can type your letter. Once you've finished typing your letter, you can click Send. Now, Send is the first icon on the toolbar. It looks like a little envelope. This has now positioned your document in your Outbox. You can click on the Outbox and see. There you will see the message that you have just typed. Now, to send it to the recipient, click Send and receive. It takes just a few seconds 
hey presto, they should have it. There are a lot of email programs available. Microsoft's Outlook Express comes bundled with Internet Explorer 4, and that's what you've found in your pack. It's simple to use. If you have any problems at all, just refer to our step-by-step -step guide that accompanies this video. Have you ever asked a question and never got an answer? Can you imagine asking a question and having the whole world answer? Well, news groups are a fascinating way of exchanging information with others all over the world. News groups have groups of information ranging from A to Z. A popular topic is that of pets. If we choose pets under recreational, we'll see horses, dogs and cats. If we choose dogs, we can choose Labradors, Basset Hounds or Chihuahuas. And we can even post a response. What we've done here is create a thread of information. Some groups offer get-rich-quick schemes and pay-to-view areas. So with these particular groups, you must use your discretion. So as you can see, that's the internet, and there's a lot out there. Microsoft's Internet Explorer 4 opens the door to a whole new world of opportunity. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the internet, and that you find the enclosed step-by-step -step resource guide useful information when connecting to the internet. When you're online, drop us an email to the address on your screen now. So until next time, don't get wet surfing out there, Wax down your modem and surf the internet today.